I'm pretty sure that the only reason why Norman Reedus and Michael Rooker agreed to voice their characters is because they believed that this was going to be a good game, as I don't think any amount of money would have sufficed to have their names attached to it. When Robert Kirkman was interviewed about it, he said that he's pretty sure that there's an AMC logo on there and not his face. He had nothing to do with the game, and while he does work on the TV series alongside the comic, he distances himself from this game as much as he can. And I don't blame him, this game is bad. Really bad. It was made by Terminal Reality, the company who made the Ghostbusters video game and the Blood Rain series. This was also their last game before they liquidated all their assets the following December and went out of business. Remember all those licensed movie and TV tie-in games that happened in the 4th and 5th generations? The ones that were really bad and nearly unplayable? Well, I guess there was so much crap left over that they just had to start another pile, as this game nearly embodies every aspect of licensed garbage ever made. The graphics are bad for a game from 2013. It looks like they try to emulate that look from the Telltale games. This is evident because when the walkers get really up close, the texture looks like it's trying to be comic book-like. which greatly contrast with the level design. Jim Sterling talks about asset flipping for games on Steam. This game seems to have done the same. There's very little variation in the walker design, and it looks like they only made five of them and there's the occasional story-specific walker. The sound design, to its credit, is pretty good. It does help set the mood, leading to some genuine creepy moments, and Norman Reedus is great as Daryl. Luckily, the game is in the first person, as the models aren't that well animated, so, emotion so the emotion they're trying to convey isn't going to cross over. The atmosphere is good, upon the first time being in the level, but after dying multiple times due to shoddy programming to the point where you don't care, the ambience is quickly gone. It goes from being creepy and eerie to tiresome and boring. When I hear about a game being really bad, I tend to take it with a grain of salt. When I saw it on Total Biscuit and Angry Joe's channels, I was like, you know, this doesn't look that bad. It is. Oh, it is. I wanted to stop playing this piece of crap after 25 minutes. Survival Instinct is a first-person shooter stealth survival game. You move with the analog sticks, jump with A, interact with X, and crouch with B. I prefer a dedicated crouch button over clicking an analog stick. And the left trigger will aim your weapon, right trigger will attack or shoot your weapon, and right bumper will shove an enemy or execute a walker when in stealth. All this is fairly standard, but then it gets worse. The D-pad will let you select food or sports drinks to replenish your health, or flares or glass bottles to distract walkers, and Y will cycle through your weapons. And the left bumper is completely unused. To sprint, you need to click the left analog stick. I think it would have been easier to press the unused left bumper though. Your goal is to make it from whatever backwater area of Georgia you're into Atlanta. And before I get into gameplay, I want to talk about this small mechanic which is actually pretty cool. After completing an area, you're given three options of travel. The highway, which uses less gas but has a higher chance of breaking down and less scavenging chances. You can take to the streets, which uses more gas, has a less chance of breaking down but more scavenging opportunities. And finally, there's the back roads, which uses the most gas, has the lowest chance of breaking down, and the most scavenging opportunities. There are chances to also hit roadblocks where you can either get out of the car and move the roadblock or go an alternate route, which uses more gas. And if you're like me, you'll be completely disgusted with a core gameplay and will skip these sections whenever possible, because you just want this crap to be over and done with. In fact, these parts are rather scripted too. If there's a voiceover at the start, you'll go straight to your destination. If all you hear is the music, you'll either be able to scavenge, hit a roadblock, break down, or run out of gas. Thankfully, to the game's credit, the four acts are broken up into 16 extremely small areas that results in a very short runtime. But I highly doubt that you'll even play past the first act before you take the disc out and snap it in half. Before you go to a stage, you're given the opportunity to send your companions on supply runs while you complete the objectives. Depending on the character depends on success rate, and most of the time they'll come back near death with very little to show for it. And even if you equip them with the proper gear that they like to use, when they come back, you'll need to heal them as unlike like you, they don't heal at the beginning of a stage. You're going to need to manage your inventory too, leaving things in the car and each car you use has different amounts of storage. Because if you don't and you find stuff that you may want, you'll need to drop something. Holding food and ammo also counts as a slot in your inventory, and if you pick up a duplicate of a weapon that you're currently holding, you'll take the weapon, not its ammo, taking up another slot. But the weapon can be given to another survivor, but that's really just a waste. The game controls like your standard first person shooter, but it's how you deal with the walkers that makes this game frustratingly annoying. You can sneak up and execute walkers from behind, instantly killing them by stabbing them in the head. This actually works when it wants to, but only in a basic way when it comes to stealth, but it should be your main method of dealing with walkers. You should avoid firearms because the sound will attract walkers with an earshot to you. The execute command has a delay 
play on it. So when you get behind a walker and you go to press and hold the button, without the prompt up, you'll just shove the thing instead. Even when the prompt pops up, it may not register as you holding it, causing you to shove the walker and needing to battle it. But when they see it and pursue you, it's an entirely different ball game. The walkers just kind of stand there, swinging their arms and you're able to charge up a melee attack, but it doesn't do anything. It's not an instant kill, so there's no point in charging it up. I just equipped a hammer and kept hitting them in the head until they stopped moving. And they'll let you wail on them all you want. They might hit you occasionally, but if you quickly tap the attack button, they shouldn't. And you can get other melee weapons too that do different amounts of damage and have different speeds. And there's different firearms that you can pick up. And you even get Daryl's crossbow, but that's near the end. The walkers can grapple you, and this is where the game truly shines as a testament to terrible ideas. A reticule will appear on the walker's head, and you need to line up another reticule and tap the trigger to execute them instantly. Sounds easy, right? Well, since this game is following every bad license game cliche, of course not. The two reticules can only be described as two magnets sharing the same polarity, repelling each other constantly, only weakening until the walker is about to rip your throat out, and you'll be taking damage the entire time, but not much. So if they grapple you, it's kind of your own fault, but this isn't helped by the fact that there's scripted sections in the game where walkers will come out from every corner of the map and chase you, because they will all surround you and grapple you instantly. You're not even given a chance to hit them. The second you and the walker come into contact, they grab you, which results in that odd QTE section. And once that walker that grabbed you is down, the next one grabs you and the process repeats, making it a conga line of death while the others slap you on the ass. Now I have seen gameplay where people have made it so that the walkers essentially funnel through a narrow passageway, entering the grappling QTE sections and having no issue with them at all, stabbing the walkers in the head without the same pole magnet repelling complications that I was having. This goes from a very basic stealth game to a war of attrition. I understand that this is a survival game, ammunition for firearms is very rare to find, and even using firearms is a bad idea. I'm not complaining about that, because I get it, okay? I get it, I get it, alright? I get it. Survival. Alright, it's good. But, why can't I just stab these motherfucking zombies in the head? Even from a gameplay perspective, it doesn't make sense. We all know that in zombie fiction that once you take out the brain, the zombie goes down. The TV show, which this game is based off of, goes by those rules. We've seen Daryl himself and other characters go through groups of walkers with stabbing weapons and even blunt instruments, stabbing and bashing in walker heads with no issue. The walkers here are pretty decomposed, so they're not recently dead, but a fully charged knife stab to the cranium can't get through that head meat? Sure, you can make the argument that it adds challenge to the game, but there's things that already implemented for challenge, like ammo and food being scarce, the need to sneak past zombies as sound alerts them. But taking that left for dead concept of swarms of zombies coming at you, albeit in a very basic, watered down version of the director AI from Left 4 Dead used, fails here because the combat doesn't work with what you have to deal with. In Left 4 Dead, you have three other characters helping you. You have more guns and ammo to spare and other tactics to survive. I came to this realization in the area after the two tutorial areas. I didn't record this part because it took me a couple times and I just stopped caring. I was standing atop a tanker truck and looking at the walkers on either side. It was my fifth attempt to clear the stage and had looked up a guide as going back the way you came gets blocked by walkers. I saw my destination ahead of me. I needed to jump off the tanker and run to the goal. When I reached the goal, I had to interact with a truck to go as the walkers were in pursuit. Here's the thing. I got inside the glowing green box of the goal. Can't the level just end? What would happen if a walker grappled me before I could hit the X button? Then I have a swarm of them to deal with as the conga line begins. Sure, I could have completed the quest of getting batteries for the cop on the roof so this way he would provide cover fire for me to make this section easier. But that's it. Helping him makes this section easier. Unless there's a guy on a roof that needs batteries in every level, there's no defending the scripted walker herd. Even if there was. Why can't the guy provide cover fire without the batteries? Unless his gun is battery powered or shoots double A's, they're not going to be helpful in this situation. Additionally, why can't he come with me and provide support? After all, he does have a gun while I have a knife. And even though he does have a gun because he's a police officer, why didn't he go get the batteries himself? Especially since he's above a C CVS, which should have batteries in it, and oh my god, this is turning into cinema sense for video games. And before that section, there's a scripted walker herd where a cell phone rings after going to get some gate keys that attracts a bunch of them. Luckily, it's not many, but still, no support. 
And after that, there's a level where you pick up a set of car keys, walk or swarm the building you're in, even if you completely clear the area beforehand. And again, no support, and you have to run like Satan is chasing you to the vehicle you're going to take. Because there's no guy in a roof that needs batteries. And what's going through your mind when you're running away from a herd of zombies isn't, Oh my god, I'm gonna die. It's, Oh my god, I don't want to repeat this a fourth time. And what doesn't make sense is, if I sneak up from behind, I can one-shot them with a knife. If they grapple me, by the time I line up the reticules, I can one-shot them with a knife. Engage them in regular combat, it takes several hits with a knife even when charged up. That doesn't make any sense for two out of three attacks with the same weapon to be one-shots. The only thing telling you where to go is a compass. It points in the direction of the objective. What would help is if certain things would glow to let you know that you needed to interact with them to get out safely. Now while there are things that glow that you need to complete an objective, I'm specifically talking about things that would aid you in your escape. Something like Faith's Runner Vision from Mirror's Edge would be helpful, or Lara Croft's Survival Sense from Tomb Raider 2013, or Joel's Daredevil Thing from The Last of Us, as I didn't know that I needed to climb a ladder to get on the back of a tanker. If there was some sort of indicator, because the walkers will be coming at you from all sides, making it so you can miss it the first couple times, or until you look it up. I'm not asking for the game to hold my hand all the way, but maybe some hey stupid over here markers might have helped the experience when running from a horde of walkers. And you may be thinking that I'm harping too much on the choices made by the developer, but think of it this way. The Walking Dead Survival Instinct came out in March of 2013. In about 8 months, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 were going to be released. The game mechanics here feel archaic, like PlayStation 1 archaic, which is unacceptable for this type of game at its time of release. A supposed AAA $60 at the time full retail game. Not some digital-only indie game trying to emulate the older survival horrors of the past. And the thing is, what I'm talking about here is just my first 30 minutes of playing the game. It doesn't get better from here. It stays at this level of crap. Very rarely do games show how bad they are that fast. And even for zombies, the walker AI is flat out stupid. They completely ignore the flashlight, only attacking once you're in their line of sight, or might not even be aware of your presence. They'll even walk into walls blindly. The game is a never-ending fetch quest. You go to an area, get a MacGuffin to move on to the next area just to get another MacGuffin to go to the next area. You're doing the exact same thing in just slightly different looking environments that reuse the same assets. There's no story or character development, the side characters mean nothing, and the story is non-existent. The game does have some pretty damn fine ideas though. It's like the Oregon Trail in a sense. Sending out survivors who can get killed while they scavenge for supplies is a great idea. Sneaking past walkers and taking them out is also a great concept. And then there's the fact that firearms are more of a punishment for using them because of the noise. Your vehicle breaking down while traveling, the opportunity to find places to scavenge or help people and bring them along, and even ditch people when you get new vehicles is all a pretty good idea. The game also gets zombies correct in that they're weak by themselves but dangerous in groups and the atmosphere is done pretty well, but you probably won't play it to completion as it'll be a large and unsightly blemish of that e-penis you call a gamer tag. I know I sure didn't. I quit playing this garbage after an hour and a half which is a third of the way through. You may call that unprofessional, but I don't give a shit. I call it efficiency because whoever squeezed this out of what sphincter didn't care either. I've done my time. I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death and I fear nothing, but I'm not going to continue playing something that's the video game equivalent of testicular torsion, and this is coming from a guy that's not only reviewed Bubsy 3D twice, played it to completion each time, which is more than any other reviewer out there can say, but I've played it and beaten it more times than I care to admit, and that game is like getting a rubber mallet wielded by Superman to the balls every three minutes. Balls if I wanted this review to go on for another hour, I could prove mathematically of how much of a piece of shit that it is, but I don't want to dedicate any more time to it than I already have, and I hope that whoever thought this game was good enough to be sold, gets a jack-o'-lantern up the ass.